Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me. I hope everybody had a fantastic Christmas and safe New Year's. I know I did. I surprised Maverick this year with a brand new Xbox Series X. His head about exploded. That was my desired reaction. I love showering him with a lot of Christmas presents because he's such a good kid and they've had such a crappy last couple of years. So he really, really deserves it. So again, welcome back. Uh, I know I took like a three week long break. Uh, it was well deserved. I really needed to, you know, kind of decompress and, and, uh, you know, handle the Christmas season. And, and, uh, it was just, it was a fantastic little break. So I missed you guys. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad to be back. So let's go ahead and get into this review. Today we have a Seiko chronograph from their essentials collection. This is model number SSB403. I'm not normally a chronograph guy at all, uh, as I simply have no need for a chronograph. I'm not timing anything like laps in a Porsche or laps, you know, like track and field around a track or swimming meets or anything like that. I just don't need a chronograph, but this is such a good looking watch. I had to review it. Let's check it out. All right, guys, as usual, we'll get into this watch, but first check out my Amazon shopping channel. If you like this or any of the other watches I've reviewed on my channel, I have an absolute ton of watches over there. So make sure you check out all of them. As you know, I get a very small commission if you buy from my Amazon store, so I definitely appreciate it. That helps out the channel. So guys, this is a regular Seiko watch box. Nothing new. This is actually, I take that back. This has been a new design for probably uh, a couple years, maybe, I guess, uh, relatively new design. Let's open this thing up. Here's your first look at the watch. Man, that is a fantastic looking watch. Again, not a chronograph guy at all, but it's just it's just so cool looking. You got the sandwich dial, you know, the little pops of orange on the chronograph hand, and that 60 minute counter over there at uh, nine o'clock. Uh, man, what a fantastic looking watch. Get that little orange stripe right there. So let's go ahead and take it out. As usual, I'll go ahead and tell you all the specs you need to know, the seven specs that you need to know. I'll put the rest of the stuff in the description field for you. Take this off its pillow. Now, so far as literature and stuff like that, this is basically just the warranty card. Seiko, like Citizen, and I think a lot of others are gonna start doing this in 2022. Uh, they've actually started last year. They're not putting big manuals in there. They're not putting uh, big you know, warranty cards or pamphlets or advertising. Um, they're basically just putting normally just a warranty card, everything else, the manual, all that other stuff is gonna be online. Uh, and Seiko is following suit with that. So don't expect big manuals anymore because, you know, they're trying to, you know, do a little bit better with the environment, save some trees. I totally get it. You know, honestly, I like actually going onto the website, find the PDF for the manual that I need. Uh, I just think it's easier and faster. You can, you know, magnify the PDF, make it, you know, the text bigger, or smaller. Uh, whereas with, you know, a printed manual, all that text is super, super small. So I actually like the fact that they're doing all this stuff. Well, 99% of it online now. So, all right, let's go ahead and close the box back up. Let me give you the seven specs you need to know. Then we'll talk about this, what I think, oh, just a fantastic looking watch, man. All right, she's looking at a 41 millimeter stainless steel case. It's 12 and a half millimeters thick. It's 48 millimeters lug to lug. Comes on a 22 millimeter NATO strap. It's only water resistant to 100 meters, which is 330 feet, you know, not a dive watch. Uh, the movement is the AT63 Mecha Quartz with about a three year battery. You know, I've always never been a big fan of battery powered watches where you actually gotta swap out the battery, but yeah, it's, it is what it is. I wish this had been uh, solar powered, that would've been fantastic. Uh, and you do get a hard Lex crystal, you know, no sapphire in this. Again, check all the other specs down there in the description field, like the fact that it has a non-screw down crown, uh, you have the date over there at 430, all that other type of stuff. So again, check all those other specs down there in the description field. So guys, again, the main reason why I decided to review this watch is I love the dimensionality. Is that even a word? I love the 3D dimensionality and the sandwich look of this dial. It is such a neat looking dial. You've got an applied Seiko logo up there at 12 o'clock. That 12 o'clock index is set down there in the dial. You have these little slots right here in between the indexes. Uh, you do have applied indexes all the way around the dial. It's just such a neat, interesting look that I haven't seen from Seiko before, and I absolutely love it. You've got the orange 60-minute timer over there at 9 o'clock. 
Uh, you've got the orange chronograph hand, and I'll demonstrate this here in just a second. Y'all are very familiar with Mecha Quartz watches, so you know you know what to expect. Looks like you have an IP coated bezel there, all the way around the watch. You've got a big chronograph second hand pusher up here at uh, what is that? About two o'clock. Uh, non uh, screw down crown, just a push pull crown. Of course, you know first position is your date, second position is your time. This is your reset button over here at four o'clock. Really angular case, as you can see right there. And you uh, do have some drilled lugs, which is nice right there. Mostly brushed finishes all over the case. It's just such a fantastic looking watch. And again, something I haven't really seen from Seiko. I like this thing a lot, man. Uh, let's get back to the dial. You got some text again up there at 12 o'clock with that underneath that uh, Seiko applied logo. Uh, you have down here the movement underneath the running seconds hand at 6 o'clock, which is, again, the 8T63, I believe. Yep. There you go. Man, just a good-looking watch. The strap, uh, it is a little stiff, not a big deal. Uh, in fact, this strap is a little too small for me, so I'm not going to try it on. Uh, you might want to get a longer strap, but the quality is very nice. You got IP-coded keepers right here, IP-coded buckle with Seiko right there. Here's your tag. Let me see if I can show you this to you. There's your tag. So it looks like retail is $285. Look at the rest of the uh, strap. You have precision laser drilled holes, which I do appreciate. And again, this strap, I, I love the color combination. Obviously, is that orange stripe uh, really does kind of highlight the orange chronograph hand and the orange 60-minute counter over there at 9 o'clock. Uh, but it is a little stiff, and I have... Guys, I probably got hundreds and hundreds of NATO straps uh, just from you know reviewing different companies over the last, I don't know, five years or so. So I'll probably pop this on a different strap a little bit longer. I like those elastic style NATO straps as well. Uh, I love those. So I might put one of those on here, I'm guessing. Uh, anyway, just something a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and take it off the NATO real quick. And let me show you the case back. Anybody that doesn't know how to use a NATO, here you go. So you have the main loop right there. Pull out this side, okay? Now you pull out this side underneath one of the uh, spring bars. There you go. And here is the case back. So guys, not much. I mean, good grief. <laughs> Talk about minimalistic. You just got Seiko right there in the middle. What does it say? Water resistant 10 bar, which means 100 meters, stainless steel. Uh, made in Japan. Look at that. I did not know this was made in Japan. Well, that's a neat little twist. I thought this just had, you know, one of those Japan movements, but it was cased in Thailand or China or something. This is actually made in Japan. Look at that. I'm going to have to update the uh, thumbnail. Make sure I say uh, made in Japan on the thumbnail. Pretty cool. All right. So let's go ahead and put it back. There we go. Put it back through the secondary loop. And this basically makes it so that if one of these spring bars fails, the watch will still be on your wrist, which is pretty cool. There we go. If I can get it back through there. Okay. There we go. Again, the strap is really stiff, but, you know, it's brand new. What, you know, what do you expect? All right. Let's put this back on. Nice and... Firm and tight. There we go. All right, so there you go. Man, I did not expect this to be made in Japan. To tell you the honest God truth. So, guys, tell me what you think of this thing, man. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love this three-dimensional dial. You got all those different layers. Uh, you got the little slots you can see down to the other dial. It looks like the bottom dial has like a concentric circle pattern. You can see that through these little slats. Uh, the uh, the 24 hour dial and the running seconds hand are very highly polished. I don't know if you can tell. The 60 minute timer over here at nine o'clock is not. It's just got a, it's orange. It looks like it has some orange paint on it, just like the chronograph hand. Uh, everything lines up perfectly. Uh, and normally with Mecha Quartz's, a lot of times when you reset it, that chronograph hand will slide one way or the other, either to the left or to the right a little bit. But this one doesn't. Let me go ahead and give you a demonstration here. I like the fact they made this a little bit taller too, a little bit easier to push. 
So make sure you're going to have your chronograph hand running around there. You're going to see your 60 minute timer over here. Click over to one after the, um, the chronograph hand sweeps around past 12 o'clock. It'll click over to one. Let's go ahead and reset it. So let's go ahead and stop it. Reset it. Instant reset. This is a Mecca Quartz. Boom. Look at that. Pretty cool. Also, the date hand is a, a quick adjust too. So those dates instantly switch over uh, to the next day. It's not like a slow progression like you see the two slowly move into a three. It just goes two, three, and then it just keeps, you know, it keeps switching over every day instantly to the next date. So I like that quick set date. Really, really nice feature. And I'm liking this watch even more <laughs> uh, the more I review it. Uh, the IP coded bezel, eh. I'm not a big fan of IP coding anything because over time it's going to show scratches. It's going to show the bare metal underneath. So I've never been a huge fan of IP coding, but you know, it is what it is. All right. So what else I want to tell you about this thing? Let me go ahead and kill the studio light and show you the very minimal loom. I think it's just a 12 o'clock pip and the hour and minute hands. You can already see it glowing just a little bit there. Yeah. I mean, they didn't, they didn't loom this thing hardly at all. There you go. Still going pretty bright though. I mean, all you really need is hour and minute hand, right? So it's, it's definitely Luma bright. You can tell how bright it is. All right, there you go. And you know what? I'm going to try to put it on real quick just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. All right, let me see if I can do this. It is a little bit small. In fact, it's a lot small. All right, guys, I'm on the last hole of the strap. So I told you it was a little too small for me. I've given me, I've got eight inch wrists, so I need a little bigger strap. It's got a lot of bling factor to it too. Look at that. Look at all those indexes catching the light. Really good looking watch, man. Now I will say this, putting it on the wrist, it's a tad hard to read because everything kind of blends in with each other. I wish the hands were maybe a little bit darker, the actual hands. Luckily the loom inside contrasts the grayness and silver of the hands. So it's not too bad to read, but it's gonna take you a couple seconds to kind of tell what time it is, which is not a bad thing. Um, but uh, it's so good looking, honestly, I don't really care that much. <laughs> Great looking watch. All right, let's go ahead and take it off the wrist. Let's go ahead and finish up this review. Let's cut everything back on. I think I turned my monitor off for some reason. All right, guys, so if you wanna get one of these, head on over to my Amazon page. They're currently $189. I'll make sure to put that link in the uh, description field for you. Uh, and as always, make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you click that notification bell. Again, welcome back to the channel. I hope, again, everybody had a fantastic Christmas and New Year's. I'm looking forward to tons of really good reviews this year of some really interesting watches. I've got tons of stuff in the works uh, coming down the pipeline, and I think y'all are really going to enjoy it. So uh, that's been about it. Uh, again, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on the next review. Take care. Bye.